today. Today the Lord talks to us about pastors who come and preach God's word to us. And so our first hymn talks about how God speaks to us through our Savior Jesus and through the prophets that he gives us. So we'll sing our first hymn. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all of your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy 
church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. true faith, provide us with all we need, and keep us safe in your care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament lesson for this, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, is written in Ezekiel chapter 2. And here we see Ezekiel's call into the ministry. The Lord came to him and called him to be his prophet. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. The Spirit entered into me as he spoke to me and brought me up to my feet. Then I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to disloyal nations who have been disloyal to me. They and their fathers have rebelled against me to this very day. These children of mine are brazen-faced and hard-hearted. I am sending you to them, and you are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says. Then whether they listen or do not listen, for they are a rebellious house, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is our Old Testament lesson. Our psalm today is Psalm 143. We'll hear the refrain, sing the refrain, and read responsively. for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my duty. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for the Lord living is righteous before you. My spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. Quickly, O Lord. Do not hide your face from me. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I have put my trust in you. Teach me to do your will, 
for you are my God. May your spirit lead me on the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The lesson today continues with our readings from 2 Corinthians. Paul here talks about his ministry. He had received some amazing revelations. And then he talks about the thorn in the flesh that God gave him to teach him to trust in the Lord's strength instead of his own strength. Therefore, to keep me from becoming arrogant, due to the extraordinary nature of these revelations, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me so that I would not become arrogant. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he would take it away from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, because my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will be glad to boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may shelter me. That is why I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then am I strong. This is our epistle lesson, the we'll single verse of the day. of Jesus and how people did not always listen to what he had to say, but he kept preaching the word of God. Jesus left there and went to his hometown. His disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did this man learn these things? What is this wisdom that has been given to this man? How is it that miracles such as these are performed by his hands? Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joses, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own relatives and in his own house. He could not do any miracles there except to lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went around the villages teaching. This is the Gospel of our Lord. May you be seated. We'll sing our next hymn.
hearts from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. The word of God that we look at today is our Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel. I will read some of that again. He said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to disloyal nations who have been disloyal to me. A little later he says, I am sending you to them, and you are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says. This is the word of God. Dear friends in Christ, when I was a freshman in college, a bunch of us for that first semester did not have any classes on Friday afternoon, which was really sweet because after a long week of studying and staying up at light, writing, writing papers and studying for tests, Friday afternoon you could just go and relax in your room, which I did a lot of times. Only thing was that the guys across the hall liked to play sheet set on, on Friday afternoon. And there were only four of them. And they liked to play five-handed sheep head, and so you know what that means. They would come into my room and grab me and say, all right, you're playing sheep set. And it's like, I don't know. I've never played the game. I don't know the rules. I don't know how to play it. And they're like, it doesn't matter. You're coming and you're going to learn how to play. And I think at one time they actually grabbed me by the ankles and tried to pull me into the room or something. So that's why I learned to play sheep head, and if you know anything about it, it's kind of a complicated game, isn't it? And so it's a little intimidating to start out, and these four guys know what they're doing, and I did not. But now, I'm glad I learned, because it's kind of a fun game. So, I was in my bed minding my own business, and out of the blue, I became a sheep head player. Kind of like Ezekiel in our text. He was minding his own business. He was living in Babylon, Babylon along the Kabar River. He was a, a priest, and the Lord came to him and said, you are now going to be a prophet. Out of the blue, he became a prophet. It happened to other people in the Bible too, right? Like Moses, he was just tending his sheep out in the wilderness, and God came to him in a burning bush and said, go back to Egypt. Because I'm going to make you a prophet of God and you're going to bring the people out of Egypt. The Lord appeared to Isaiah, Jeremiah, same thing. Amos was a farmer down in Judah. And God came to him and said, you're going to go up to Israel and you're going to be a prophet. Now Jonah was a prophet, but the Lord came to him and said, go to Nineveh. Preach to those people up there. You know how he enjoyed hearing that from God, right? James, John, Peter, Andrew, tending their nets on the Sea of Galilee. The Lord came to them and said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. They left everything and followed him. The Apostle Paul, when he was Saul the Pharisee, was on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians. God knocked him to the ground. Jesus converted him and said, I'm now sending you out to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And so these are ways that God came to his people and made them prophets. God does the same thing today, makes people prophets or pastors, if you will, but he does it in a, in a different way. And so we want to look at that today and what that means for us. Also, we see today that God gives each of us a calling to share his message with others. And so our theme for today, God says to us, I have sent you. He sends pastors so that he gives us ministers, but he also gives us a ministry in our lives. So back to Ezekiel. As I mentioned, he was a priest living in Babylon, early years of the captivity. And the Lord came to him to call him to be a prophet. He came in a, in a giant firestorm or windstorm that he saw coming out of the north. This is all described in the first chapter. And that windstorm had lightning and fire in it. And in that storm, he saw four living creatures. And they had four different faces on their heads. And, and they had wings. And there were wheels, wheels with eyes on them, so that they could roll. And above those four living creatures, there was a throne with a human form on that throne. And above his waist, that human throne looked like molten metal. And below his waist, he was burning fire. So this was a, a vision of God. And the Lord, out of that vision, then called Ezekiel to be his prophet. Ezekiel did not say to himself, one day I think I'll be a prophet. 
Or it wasn't that someone said to Ezekiel, you would make a good prophet. Or God didn't come to him and say, hey, Ezekiel, what do you think about being a prophet? No, God came to him and said, Ezekiel, you are going to be my prophet. And you're going to tell people what I tell you to say. Now, when that happened, it says at the end of chapter 1 that Ezekiel fell to the ground because he is a sinful man standing before the holy God. And as it picks up in chapter 2 then, God said to him, stand up. And it says the Holy Spirit came into him and lifted him to his feet so he could stand up before the Lord. And so what does that mean? Ezekiel is forgiven. And he can now stand before God as a forgiven, washed clean child of God. And told to be a prophet. And so, he says this. I am sending you to them, and you are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says. So he told them what they were to do. You are to just tell them what I tell you to say, which sounds pretty simple, right? God says to you, tell them this, and then you tell them that. Except the only thing is, a lot of them weren't going to listen to what he had to say. I am sending you to the people of Israel, to disloyal nations who have been disloyal to me, they and their fathers have rebelled against me to this very day. These children of mine are brazen-faced and hard-hearted. So they were stubborn, which is why they were in Babylon, because for years and years and years they've been worshiping other gods. God sent them to Babylon, and we would think, now they're in Babylon, because they had rejected God, they should repent, right? God says a lot of them still are going to be rebellious and still are not going to listen to what you have to say. And so it was very tempting for Ezekiel to slide off of that and maybe say things that would be more to the liking of the people, or to say things that would be more to his own liking. But God says, no, you tell them what I tell you to say. This is what it should be. And so then if they repent, they hear your words and repent, they know that a prophet has been among them. And he says, even if they don't repent, and if they remain in their stubbornness, and judgment comes on them down the road, they will still down the road realize that God sent them a prophet. Then they will listen or do not listen, for you are a rebellious house. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. And so this is Ezekiel's call into the ministry. How does that fit for us today? Well, I don't like to talk about myself so much or call attention to myself, but that's kind of what we're doing today because the Lord is talking to us about prophets or about pastors. And there's a lot in this for pastors. For one thing, if you want to be a pastor, then you need to have a call. Now, when I went to the seminary, I didn't really meet anyone there who said that they had seen a fiery vision from God who came to them and said, you are to be a pastor. We were pretty much there because we thought I would like to be a pastor or because someone said to us, you would make a good pastor. But that wasn't our call into the ministry. It was just us thinking, well, I think I'll study and, and learn to be a pastor. Our call came later when we graduated and at that time then, we received a call to go to a congregation and, and be their pastor. It didn't come by God directly coming to us and saying, okay, here's where you go, but it came through the assignment committee. But still, we believe that this call was from God. Because this is what the Apostle Paul said to the pastors in Ephesus. Always keep watch for yourselves and over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, in which the Holy Spirit has placed you to be overseers. So when we went out to our first call and when we continued to serve in calls, we have that assurance that the Lord has called us to do this. And so we can go with that confidence the Holy Spirit has sent us. The Holy Spirit has also told us what to say. Now, when I sit down to write a sermon and I'm thinking about, well, what should I say in this sermon? How do you think that works? What do you think runs through my mind? Do you think I say to myself, what can I say to these people to entertain them this week? 
Or do you think I say, what kind of stories can I come up with? Stories about peas or camping or sheep's heads so that they'll like that and they'll come back again next week? Or do you think I say to myself, hmm, maybe there's some tidbits of wisdom that I can give so that people will learn something today? Not how it works, right? Now I may throw in a little story here or there, but God tells us to say, this is what the Lord says. It may be tempting to slide off of that to get to this text and go, oh, this part here they're not going to like to hear. They might be offended, so maybe I'll skip over that part. No, God says, say everything that I tell you to tell them. Which is way better, right? Way better. And so that's the call, that's the assignment that God gives us to say what he wants us to say. So there's a lot in here for pastors, as I said. There's also stuff in here for you guys sitting in the pew. So I, we're talking about me standing up here and talking, you guys sitting and listening in the pews. But what is there for you to hear from me? And again, maybe I'm comfortable for me to, to draw attention to myself. But what we hear here is that God has given you a pastor. God gives you a pastor so that you can hear the Word of God. And not all pastors are perfect. The Apostle Paul had his thorn in the flesh. And so pastors have their weaknesses, but we know that God sends pastors into his church so that people can hear his Word. And that's the other thing that we can learn. God gives us pastors so we can hear his Word. When you came today, why did you come? Did you come to hear some jokes or clever stories or some of my wisdom? Nope, that would be a waste of your time, right? Just to hear that. You came to hear what God has to say. Which, again, is way better than me just making up stories. Even if it's the law. Even if it's stuff we don't want to hear. God told Ezekiel, these people are going to be stubborn. They're not going to listen to what you have to say. We don't really need that, right? Because we are never stubborn. We never disobey God. We never do what we want to do, even though God says do this. But we know that's not true, are we? We know we're stubborn. We know we disobey. We know we go against what God says. That's the very essence of our sinful nature, is that we want this no matter what. God or anyone else says it. So we need to hear the law so that it calls us to repentance. So we see our stubbornness and our sin so that we can repent of that and hear the gospel. That sweet gospel. Why did God send Ezekiel to those people again? To make them miserable? No, he wanted to call them to repentance. These were, these were his chosen people. The children of Abraham, not that there was anything special about them, but still he loved them, he chose them, he wanted them to come back to him so they could hear the gospel. So God wants us, wants to give us the gospel because we are his chosen people. Not anything in us, but before we were born, God chose us to be his own. And then he sent his son Jesus would die in our place so that we could receive forgiveness and so that we could be in heaven with him. And God sends us prophets so that we can know that. So that we can know we're forgiven and saved and loved by him. The other day I was talking to a lady who's not a member of this church, but she's a Wells member in another church. And uh, she was raised in a Christian church, not Lutheran. And she was in tears when we were talking because even as late as her high school years, she did not have the assurance of going to heaven through faith in Jesus Christ as her Savior. Can you imagine that? Being raised in a Christian church and not know that you can go to heaven because Jesus is your Savior. We hear that all the time, don't we? Every Sunday, it's in there somewhere in the sermon that Jesus died for us so that we can be in heaven with him. That's what our church is all about. And we never take that for granted. That sweet gospel about Jesus 
And may we be thankful that the Lord has given us a church that teaches the truth and pastors that talk about Jesus. And that that's the center of, of what we do here. And so, today what we've been talking about pretty much this whole time is I'm standing up in front talking and you're sitting out there and listening. Let's flip that around a little bit and have you jump into the part of doing the talking, okay? So you're talking and someone else is listening to you. How does that look? Well, God gives us a ministry. God has given us a calling. Now by that, I don't mean that he has given you a call into the public ministry. When we say public ministry, we mean a, a group of Christians, a Christian congregation calls a pastor, and that pastor speaks for that church in public to everyone out there. But God gives us a calling in our own private ministry, in our own lives, and it can look like many different things in many different ways, talking to kids or grandkids or nephews or nieces, encouraging friends, talking to our family, sharing Jesus with someone we meet somewhere, just sharing what Jesus has to say to us. Now, we may feel inadequate at that, that may be scary to us, but just as the Apostle Paul was told my strength will work through the weaknesses of your thorn in the flesh. So we know that when we have our thorns in the flesh, we can look to the Lord for his strength. And he will help us and enable us to do what he has given us to do. And just as pastors are to say what God tells them to say, so that's the same for us. If we're talking about Jesus or sharing our faith, we just say what God tells us to say. Just what his word says, to just talk about Jesus. What we know about him, how he died for us, how he rose again. Just say what's in there. Maybe not everyone will listen, but that's okay, because that's not our job, to make people believe. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But we know that this is what they need to hear. We pray that God would give us the strength to share that with them. And so, a lot to be thankful for today, right? Prophets that God gives us to share His Word and a ministry so that we can be prophets and share His Word. Amen. <coughs> and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now let's join in confessing our faith. We'll use the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. For giving us the health and strength to assemble before you in the congregation of your redeemed, 
We praise your holy name, O Lord God. For refreshing us at the fountain of your word and sacrament, we rejoice. We confess that we have often been a rebellious and stubborn people. We have often been more concerned about your messengers than about your message. We have listened to your word, but have failed to apply it to our daily lives. We've complained about our weaknesses and failed to lean on your strength. We have been impatient under trials, forgetting that through them you strengthen our faith. Send us your Holy Spirit to teach us to bear with patience your own, our own and others' infirmities. Keep us diligent in prayer and open our eyes to see your answers. May your almighty power be the strength of our weaknesses. Help us to believe that through our faith in your Son, Jesus, we can overcome all of our problems. And grant a special measure of your Holy Spirit to your church, that its members may be lights that shine brightly in the world of confusion and weakness. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we include a prayer for Charlotte Shears. She's a youth group helper in Waupon, so if you've ever been to a youth rally, you've met Charlotte. Some of you may also know her as a friend. Um, a few weeks ago, we mentioned she is dealing with breast cancer, so she had surgery from that, and then this week, that went very well, this week she's undergoing her surgery. So we pray. O oh God, giver of health, life, safety, and strength, we praise you for having granted your servant, Charlotte, recovery from her surgery. May she daily remember your great goodness. And also, as she looks forward to surgery, we pray that you would sustain her and give her the assurance of your abiding care and comfort. Remove all anxiety and fear from her heart and lead her to rest all her confidence in you. Bless the work of the surgeon and give success to the surgery as it pleases you. Be with her and fill her with thankfulness for all of your blessings. And we pray for our communicants. Heavenly Father, we confess our many sins, trusting that Jesus Christ, your Son, has fully atoned for them all. As we come to the Lord's table to receive the heavenly food of our Savior's body and blood, use it to comfort our hearts and to give peace to our minds. Use it to give strength and and to sustain our faith, to purify our love. As we leave this table, may it be with a renewed zeal to live godly lives to your glory. We ask it in the name of Jesus, who is our Paschal Lamb and our Redeemer, and in his name we join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. 
And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Bible school starts, so we're excited about that. Our theme is Team Jesus, kind of fits with the Olympics. The kids will have an Olympic Games this year at the uh, at VBS. We have a, we're able to get a guest visitor to come and talk to the kids also each morning. He's going to be the coach, so he will be here. Um, there are still some blanks on the sign-up sheet if you would like to help with snacks or drinks for Vacation Bible School. That's by the boy here. And then, Lord willing, next Sunday we'll have our service outside for the other permits and the kids will sing their VBS songs. Also some other things here next Sunday, St. John's is hosting Koine, so if you'd like to hear Koine, um, that's at Soldiers and Sailors Park. Um, hopefully an outdoor service for them as well. There's a note there too about a seniors gathering in Beaver Dam on Tuesday. And I think that's about it. So. Any birthdays today? No? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor. Happy birthday to you. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, I can 
<laughs> in and of itself, so that would be a lot of time to go out. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, yeah, some birthdays here, huh, Julie? Tomorrow. Matt? Yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> Whoa. Like 40? <laughs> Not that big, uh. Okay. Happy birthday, guys. Anyone else? Yeah, Bexley? Brandy's is the 19th? Her birthday. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday, Brandy. Matthias is the 19th. Matthias? Happy birthday. How many years is that for you? Eleven. That's cool. That's a big number too. Huh? <laughs> a couple more years will be a teenager. Huh? <laughs> Sandy. Friday. Last Friday. Okay, the ninth, huh? Happy birthday, Greg. Huh? Any anniversaries too? Any other birthdays? No? Nope. Alright, everyone have a good week. I'm not sure if we're in the front. <laughs>